Hey, Midnight, are you okay? Yeah, fine, Lefty. Just contemplating the realization every brony creator goes through at some point that I've spent years of my life pouring all my time, effort, and skill into analyzing a kid's TV show about ponies, and my work will only ever be appreciated by a niche demographic of people that is gradually getting smaller with every year, and one day it will all be forgotten, and so everything I do is essentially meaningless, and there is no transcendental purpose to anything in the universe. Okay... Well, if it makes you feel any better, I've liked to watch cars go in circles for hours on end for 20 years. Yeah, I do that too. Oh, you're a NASCAR fan too? Formula One. Hmm, interesting. You know, that does give me an idea though. What if we combine our love of racing with Pony? Maybe review the show's racing episode? Well, I've already done Cart Before the Ponies. No, I mean the good racing episode. Remember Fall Weather Friends all the way back in Season 1? Well, I have always been meaning to review one of the early episodes. Hey, this is perfect timing too. NASCAR just visited Watkins Glen a few weeks ago. The old F1 track? You mean you are actually familiar with right turns? For twice a year, yeah. The episode opens with a scene establishing the relationship between AJ and Rainbow Dash in the beginnings of their rivalry. This was one of the strengths of Season 1, taking the time to properly explore the growing friendships and dynamics between each of the main six, so that we'd be fully invested in them, especially when those friendships are at stake in later episodes. Having said that, this development could have been tied in better to the core plot. I guess it's not just the newer episodes that suffer the problem of taking a while to get to the point. I mean, it takes the best part of ten minutes to reach the centrepiece of this story, that being the running of the leaves. It doesn't help that although there are some nice visual gags in there, the Iron Pony competition scenes do get rather repetitive. Not repetitive to the level of cart before the ponies, but still bad, especially when most of them involve some kind of spike abuse. I mean, what was it with that in the early years of the uh, show? Midnight? What? Oh yeah, I forgot you were there. This is a collab, remember? Yeah, sorry, still getting used to sharing my soapbox with some pony else. Okay then, that's alright, but I actually do agree with you somewhat. I love the build-up of Applejack and Rainbow's rivalry, how it starts off as friends innocently playing a game of horseshoes with a little smack talk, but it balloons into an all-out competition of athleticism. While it does a fine job of developing their competitive nature, I agree that the events get a little repetitive and a little redundant. For example, there's a competition involving measuring the strength of a pony's buck which AJ wins in a hilarious fashion, bonus points for the humor. Yet later on, we see them kicking a football or hand egg ball to you Europeans in a distance competition. If AJ won the strength of a pony's kick, then what's the point of basically doing it again just with a ball? As for the spike abuse, I think it's actually okay in this episode. It's over fairly quickly for my taste, so it's not really bothersome to me. I guess as the early episodes go, it's not the worst offender. There is also the other season one trope of Twilight being shoehorned into the plot without any real justification. And I'm here to... Uh, I don't know. Why is she here? Weird. I ask that same question every time Stairmaster comes on later in the season. It's almost like the writers were being very self-aware here with it being the first season. I can just imagine the discussion in the writers' room sounding very similar. So what is Twilight doing here? What excuse can we use this week? Like what if she suddenly decides to enter the running of the leaves at the last second? Then all the other writers laughed at how silly that idea would be and they decided to make it a joke in the episode. What in tarnation are you doing up here? I'm racing! <laughs> Twilight. And let's give her a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference while we're at it, because why not? Even though 24 is a far superior number than 42. But anyways, this goes even further when you realize that throughout the Iron Pony competition, Twilight doesn't really need to be there outside of cheering on her friends from the stands. I mean, you've already got Spike pseudo-announcing and then officially announcing along with timing some of the events, Fluttershy running the scoreboard, and of course, AJ and Rainbow competing. I guess Twilight was reading off which competitions were coming up, but really, they could have just tacked that list onto any tree or fence post and it would have worked just fine. It's not like Twilight even does a good job of being the judge, given that she's allowing one of the competitors to blatantly cheat with no consequences. Oh, don't even get me started on the cheating. As someone who takes the issue of cheating, especially in racing as seriously as possible, it's absolutely ludicrous to me that not one pony out of that crowd of dozens of spectators calls out Rainbow for using her wings to win the last few Iron Pony contests. I mean, really? No AJ supporters, AJ's family, or Twilight who loves to run things by the book, and the one time she could have been useful in the first act, calls out Rainbow for cheating, especially during the tug-of-war event? She lifts Applejack into the air and the ponies in the background are smiling. 
rolling. It makes all the bystanders seem horrendously oblivious or they're okay with ponies cheating in plain sight. And no, I'm sorry, I do not see any argument for how this is not cheating. Rainbow using her wings to get further than AJ would be like me challenging someone to a bike race and I show up on a bicycle but they show up on a motorcycle. Oh, and don't think there's any Earth Pony bias between us, because I assure you there isn't any. And don't give me that Earth Pony super strength garbage. I mean, yeah, absolutely no bias at all here. Besides, the worst thing about no one but AJ calling out Rainbow's blatant cheating is it sort of takes away what could have been an interesting aspect from the race later on. Even if it is just a small handful of ponies accusing Rainbow of cheating, that could add some good tension to the race for Rainbow trying to prove she can win without using her wings or resorting to dirty tactics at all. You know, keep that chip on her shoulder that she can win fair and square before the demand of competition consumes her. Speaking of which, now we move on to the race with main commentary provided by Pinkie Pie, because of course, who else would it be? Yes, and grudge rhymes with fudge. Yes, it does. What? And I like fudge, but if you eat too much fudge, I get a punch and then I can't fudge. Poor Spike. He looks just like I do when Jeff Burton won't shut the hell up during NBC's broadcast of NASCAR races. He should just be glad he's not watching the F1 coverage. When it comes to going off on random tangents with no points, I don't think anyone will ever beat David Croft. Also, it kind of irks me that Spike begins the running of the leaves without waving a green flag or a flag at all. It just seems unnatural, like a standing start. Like a rolling start, I think is what you were meant to say. You know what I mean, Midnight. Still, it's not as bad as the most sinful thing an MLP episode can have, disjointed continuity. As the race starts, we see AJ and Rainbow Dash with their numbers 8 and 11 on their flanks, but as the race progresses, there's a shot where their numbers disappear and then instantaneously reappear in the next shot. Well, if the reaction to the Teacher of the Month gag from non-compete clause is any indication of how obsessed bronies are with continuity, then I'm surprised they weren't rioting in the streets over this. And now we get to the crux of the episode, AJ and Rainbow getting swallowed up by competition during the race. What really stands out in this episode for me is just what happens to the duo before they start trying to out-cheat each other. Notice how Applejack listens to reason with Twilight's help and realizes and understands that Rainbow didn't cheat at all, it was just a rock she wasn't paying attention to in her path. Applejack is able to slow down and analyze what went wrong so she can remember to watch for obstacles later. On the other end, however, Rainbow outright refuses to listen to Twilight and assumes AJ tripped her instead of a tree stump, thus igniting her ego and reign of cheating once more. It shows us how narrow-minded she is when it comes to competing, how the only goal in her mind is being the first one done or just being the best no matter what she has to do. This gives us a good insight of how different AJ and Rainbow's views on competition are, rather than them just being exact clones of one another another. These subtle quirks and differences between the two are very much appreciated. I'd say while they do have their differences with how they approach competition, both AJ and Rainbow Dash are well handled in this episode in the sense that they never lose perspective of what matters. Wow, that little cheater did that on purpose! It's... Oh. See, even when they are using highly questionable methods to gain the upper hoof and win the race, it is clear the rivalry is all in good spirit, and they never take it too seriously, at least not to the point where they prioritise it over all else, even when negligently putting others in danger like in non-compete claws. Yeah, while I did enjoy that episode, some parts could have been better handled. It reminds me of how racing drivers can often be completely different people in the car and out of the car. Quite often they'll say and do things in the heat of the competition with the adrenaline still flowing, only to back track on it later once it is over and they've seen things more in perspective. Actually, the most interesting aspect of this, I think, is we see Applejack pull ahead of Rainbow before Rainbow trips, so we essentially see just how blind competition makes Rainbow right from the beginning. From her perspective, Applejack did trip her even though we clearly see Applejack pull ahead before Rainbow trips. Kind of like how one driver is convinced by confirmation bias that another driver blatantly wrecked them, but then they see the official replay that tells a vastly different story. This really is where we see what can happen when someone doesn't keep their thirst for competition in check. It deceives them into doing things they wouldn't normally do. Hence why they end up finishing in last place, showing how becoming too deeply obsessed with beating someone on a personal level can actually be a detriment to your performance. This is of course an exaggerated example, but it's also true in real life. You should focus on refining your own skills above all else and let the opposition worry about themselves, which is what Twilight does and ends up finishing ahead of them. What's good about this 
this though is it's not a simple retreading of the old slow and steady wins the race moral either. Twilight uses knowledge to her advantage, approaching the race with a clear strategy to get the most out of her natural ability. I actually love that the writers had Twilight come in fifth place instead of winning. They cleverly lead us to believe she would win with how quickly she could catch up whenever AJ or Rainbow messed with each other despite hanging in the back. In fact, let's rewind for a minute. Remember how Twilight was enamored with a butterfly when she and Spike left the library right before the start of the race? I like to think that this was a hint at how Twilight was going to strategically approach the race. This plays with expectations fairly well, but it also helps present an underlying lesson as opposed to what Applejack and Rainbow Dash had to learn. Twilight proved that you need brains to work together with Brawn in order to succeed by how she used the strategy of pacing herself while the others wore themselves out. In some motorsports, you come to a decision whether to get to the front as soon as possible and hold that track position, or save your tires or fuel for the end to try and outsmart your competition into making a mistake. Simply doing the exact same thing as your competition rarely ever works in your favor, as evidenced by AJ and Rainbow trying to screw with one another while Twilight's strategy let her notch a top 5 finish in her first race. So what we're basically saying is if you read enough books you can become a racing champion. I need to start building a trophy case. To be fair, it takes years of hard studying just to understand NASCAR's points system. I've been saying the same thing for 15 years. Join the club. Anyway, who should be there to greet the ponies at the finish line but Princess Celeste herself. Wait a minute, where'd she come from? She clearly wasn't present at the dropping of the invisible green flag. Every pony should have noticed her standing on the sidelines or sitting in the grandstands. Did she just show up halfway or something? But it does look like she has something important to say, so I'll shut up. Our behavior was just terrible. <laughs> we weren't very good sports. Sounds to me like an important lesson was learned. Let's see if you'll still be saying that seven seasons from now. To be fair, the moral is a good one. As Celestia says, any pony can get caught up in the heat of competition, and that's not necessarily a terrible thing in itself. That crazy determination to beat someone at all costs can be fun and alluring, so long as you don't lose sight of what's really important. At the end of the day, though they may have lost the race, Applejack and Rainbow Dash's relationship not only remains intact, but is almost certainly strengthened by the experience. I, for one, adore and appreciate this moral so freaking much. Don't let competition consume you to the point you have to tear down or wreck other competitors to build yourself up. Competition is meant to help you become better, to test you and motivate you to reach goals, and the episode reinforces this. It's important to remember that the friendship is always more important than the competition. Spot on, Twilight. It's healthy to build up a little rivalry with someone, be it a random competitor or even a friend. It's more personal and a bit of a motivational boost. And a rivalry doesn't mean you have to hate someone else. Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Gordon had one of the fiercest rivalries in NASCAR, but it was built on respect. Both went head-to-head -head hundreds of times in the 90s, but once the checkered flag waved, they proved they were good friends and had tons of respect for what the other could accomplish. Applejack and Rainbow Dash had the established friendship before the episode, but rather than learn from one another, they just wanted to beat each other without keeping that thirst in check. As the episode shows, it's so easy to let that heat blind you, but having to learn that at the same time only helps their friendship become stronger, and their respect for one another went up tremendously. Looking back, Four Weather Friends is one of the highlights from the often forgettable Season 1 of MLP. This is due to some good humorous dialogue and strong themes carefully woven throughout the story. Central to both of these elements is character, and that above all is what makes this work. Applejack and Rainbow are multi-layered characters here, and while the premise of two fierce competitors who share a mutual respect and personal bond is not wholly original. This is a very neat execution of the trope, and it's easy to see why that closing shot of the friends running through the woods is such an iconic image from the early years of the show, especially among Apple Dash shippers. It should surprise no one that Fall Weather Friends gets a green flag rating from this racing fan. Seeing the more physical gags that were littered in the early season was such a blast, and really were what helped dull the repetitive nature of the first act, especially Rainbow being flattened by the bale of hay. Though, Pinky's insane commentating held up the humorous dialogue quite well, too. And pushing the racing aside, I applaud Amy Keating Rogers for how she portrayed the differences of AJ and Rainbow's approach to rivalries and competition. It presents two different mindsets rather than just copy-pasting one personality so people who like differences in their athletes have a better chance at connecting with the conflict. 
As someone who's seen numerous personalities clash on the racetrack for 20 years, the writing for AJ and Rainbow is really something to be respected. Well, if we're going to be using proper rating systems, Full Weather Friends gets a green signal from me. This is Midnight Chimes waiting for the last train back to Ponyville. And I'm Mr. Left Turn. I'll see you when I get back from the track. If you enjoyed this video, then you should go check out Mr. Left Turn's channel, which will be linked at the end. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe over here as well. Yeah.